maybe you're near the 10 year 10 year window you're getting towards the end of the 10 year period and you need to figure out what evidence you need in order to get that certificate issued because if you the danger with all this is is that if you submit a certificate don't assume that the council doesn't have any evidence to the contrary so the test of all of this is right so if you submit a certificate to the council it is on the balance of probability that what you are proposing is true so basically what that means is you need to submit evidence to the council and there can't and there shouldn't be any evidence that the council can find on their own off their own back that demonstrates what you are proposing is not true so that means that you need to have all your records up front and ready so that when you submit something to the council it's just a, a tick box exercise and it's very easy for them to issue the certificate so I'm going to kind of walk you through an example that I've recently done to kind of give you a flavor as to the evidence that you need so I recently helped someone uh, get a certificate of lawfulness for a parcel of land originally it was part of a car park but over the years it got turned into commercial use so what used to be a car park it got fenced off and then it used for storage and then over the years a, a small business was operating out of there for like scaffolding they were storing scaffolding and it was all business operated so what we need to what we needed to demonstrate is that that had been in use for more than 10 years so we needed to demonstrate without on the balance of probability to the council that this parcel of land that we're showing them is its own unit and that it is has been in operation in commercial use in its own right for more than 10 years so what we needed to do, so again, just to emphasize this whole thing. So when you submit a certificate to the council, the test is on the balance of probability, what you're saying is true. So there's a few keys to this. And there are certain bits of evidence that are very, very strong when it comes to demonstrating this. There's different levels of, ev of evidence. So first of all, in this particular example, it was in a yard. So that means that it was you could see it from the sky so what was available to us was historic imagery from Google Maps there's Google Maps there's other providers as well um, and we could see that over 10 years that yes when when the, the building was originally designed or built it was just a car park but then over the years more than 10 years ago it looked like there was a fence around it and then you could see things being stored in there so that was the first piece the first piece was just showing that yes that site had been cordoned off for something else whatever that might be and then the next level of evidence which is very very strong is contracts so if a um, business has been operating out of there and they they are leasing it off the freeholder there's going to be a contract with that and then with that contract, you can say that XYZ business signed an agreement on XYZ year and we have been operating there ever since. So going back through the evidence, what we've identified so far is that a parcel of land has been used for, has, has been cordoned off for something. And then the next bit of evidence is, okay, this was leased to a business more than 10 years ago, but you need to demonstrate that that site has been in use. That's not enough. So the next level of evidence is contracts and receipts so what's normal operation for a business like that is you will get maybe delivery receipts or maybe you had some make changes to that area so let's say they wanted to build an office in that parcel of land which they did a contractor would come in everything is signed and dated saying XYZ provider is going to build this office building on this address this parcel of land now in this in this case it didn't have an address but it was they basically created one so it was unit x a and then that was the evidence enough to say this parcel of land has been cordoned off for something someone has signed a contract to use it for the lease and we now have evidence that activity has been going on there in relation to that business but the problem is that one contract is not enough you can't have a contract or a receipt done in 2013 and say oh 10 years ago we were operating there you have to show evidence of continuous use for 10 years uh, if new tenants were coming in there every year you'd need to submit the contracts every every year to show that look a new business has come has arrived into that area every year and they have been operating out of there and then the same thing goes with receipts you need to show continuous use so you need to show that 2013 14 15 16 17 all the way up to the present day shows that we have there has been business operating out of there every year constantly for the for more than 10 years and that's very very strong evidence those pieces of information are so strong 
other pieces of evidence are things like council tax records. You should be able to find the council tax records, business rates. Every year a business needs to pay the council to operate out of there. So keep all of your evidence, that any, any evidence that you have with that council to show that you're allowed to operate there. That could also be things like utility bills. Utility bills is also very, very strong. So if your electricity has been turned on for XYZ company and you have paid that electricity bill for every single year and it has that company's name that relates back to the lease or the contracts, again, stronger evidence that, okay, you, they've been operating there, they've got the electricity on, they've been getting contracts, they've also got water going to the site, clear evidence that there's been activity. And there are other bits of information you could submit, but I would say the next strongest one uh, would kind of tie all of this together. So for every business that's operated out of there, there would be a, a manager or a director or whatever. Getting a statutory declaration from those, from those business owners. There are frameworks you can find online, but basically it needs to say, I, I Joe Bloggs uh, of XYZ Business have operated at this address for more than 10 years and this business does XYZ activity, in this case it was scaffolding and storage. We've been operating out of this site for more than 10 years and I declare this to be true. That then needs to be signed by a solicitor, stamped, and that is a statutory declaration that you then submit to the council as evidence and that will tie the whole thing together. Now this is a perfect situation, but some, some of this evidence, so whilst this evidence is all perfect, it's great if you can get all this evidence, but with 10 years, it's more than likely that your evidence is gonna be patchy. And that then comes back to the point about the balance of probability. So let's say you have six or seven or eight years out of the 10 and there's a gap and you've, you've, you've looked for every, every avenue you can to try and fill up that evidence. So in, in our case, in the case that I was helping with, there was a two year gap where we couldn't find, basically the business had gone under, the business had, had ceased to exist, it closed down, we couldn't get hold of the owner, no one could find him, so we couldn't get a statutory declaration. So basically in that case, we had to explain that, okay, more than 10 years ago, commercial activity started and then it carried on until this date. And then we do have evidence in this two year gap that a new lease was signed, but we don't have any other, any other evidence of activity. And then you show the you, you would show the example of this be, this business has ceased to exist and you point them to the company records and stuff like that. But then two years later, it all kickstarted again and here's the evidence. And you need to make sure in that instance, when you're submitting, that there's nothing that the council can find to the contrary of what you're saying. So it's very hard for them to do that. If you've covered every every angle you can do, you can demonstrate that on the balance of probability, uh, the commercial activity has been going on there for 10 years. So if you are gonna be using a certificate of lawfulness to demonstrate 10 years, and you're thinking about going to the council, start digging through all your records and try and find everything that I've just laid out there. And that's in the case of commercial. So if you like, if you're thinking about a residential thing or an HMO or something like that, tenancy agreements are very strong. Statutory declarations from those tenants say, yes, I lived there. And here's my contract of saying I lived here. Here's me signing it on this year. And just have a continuous period of that, of that time over 10 years to show that, yes, we lived here for this, this period of time. Here's my contract. Here's the utility bills. Here's the council tax records. Here's the, dated imagery if, if it helps your case and then you should get your certificate issued so the key thing the other point to note here is that it's not uh, it's not a planning assessment so they're not the, the council aren't assessing it against policy they're just assessing whether or not what you're saying is true that's it so that's why you just need to have everything all your records clear because it's not a planning assessment it's not an assessment against policy D1 to check what whether you've done is acceptable from a design point of view or anything like that or use point of view. It's just are you what what you're saying is it true or not? That's it. That's the only test. So if you want to learn more about how to use the planning system and how to unlock the value or development potential of any site, click the link below and you can learn more.